Which fruit is the best to practice suturing on? We got cantaloupes, oranges, grapefruit, grapes, tomatoes, bananas, avocado. Which one's the best? Let's find out today at Citizen Surgeon. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name is Dr. Eric Pearson. I'm a pediatric surgeon, love doing medical education, and today we're going to build on the technique series by looking at suturing practice and fruit. Now, I would suggest that out of all these fruits, there's no best one, and in fact, each fruit will allow us to perfect a different suturing technique. So, bananas, good thickness of the skin, that might allow us to practice just simple interrupted sutures or running continuous sutures, whereas something like a cantaloupe, that might help us practice really deep sutures like we might see in a fractured liver, and then the tomato and the grape is gonna allow us to practice those very fine motor skills for things like vascular anastomosis, or in my case, putting together an esophagus in a baby with a tracheoesophageal fistula. So today I'm gonna to go through each of these fruits found at your local grocer very easily. And then the nice thing is when you're done practicing, you can just eat them. So I love that. I think fruits are the best to practice with. So let's get into each of those. And what do we wanna start with? Let's go with the banana. So the banana, this has a nice, a relatively thin skin, and this is gonna allow us to practice interrupted sutures or running continuous, like a baseball type stitch. Uh, and this has always been my go-to. I put out a short a while ago, uh, looking at the banana as a great model for suturing. You know, the nice thing is when you buy them, you usually buy them in a bunch. So a lot of opportunities to practice. So let's check this one out, see what you think. All right, so here we have our banana. We have our suture. This is a 4-0 Nurilon on an RB1 needle. Very easy suture to practice with. We have a scalpel to make an incision. We have our needle driver. We have scissors and a pickup. Okay, so let's start with making an incision. So you make a simple incision, something like that, okay? And that's gonna be through the skin of the banana. We can start with interrupted sutures. So we wanna pronate the needle, get that in at 90 degrees. Pull that through. Surgeon's knot. And then we could repeat that all the way down the banana. And when you're done, you have a line of sutures to close that. Okay, now let's try something else. Let's try a running continuous suture. So we can make a small incision here, something like that, just to demonstrate a running continuous suture. We're going to grab the needle so it's ready for the next bite. We can even follow ourselves. And then continue the suture. Next, I wanted to go to the orange. Now, I go to the orange because this is kind of a, a step back from the banana. If your technique is not that great and you're skiving the needle, that's a big no-no, then the orange can give us a little bit um, easier time putting this together because the banana can tear easily. So if you're ripping those bananas up, go to the orange and I'm going to show you some simple interrupted sutures on the orange and how this can be a great model. So here's our orange. Now our orange has a little thicker skin. so 
With this one, we could do simple interrupted sutures. We can also practice our vertical mattress sutures, which would be great. So with a little thicker skin on the orange, we could use a little uh, bigger needle. So this is a tapered needle. It's an SH needle with 3 ovicro. And so here, similarly, I'm going to pronate. I'm going to go straight in. I'm going to have that come right through, equidistant, about 5 millimeters from the edge. Pull that through. And then, same thing. With the thicker skin, we could also do a vertical mattress suture, which is a far, far near, near stitch. So we would pronate, we get a good bite of that, that deep tissue. We drive that through. Bring that through, and then we're gonna go back with a superficial near, near bite. That's going to allow us to practice those vertical mattress sutures for skin that's really thick or skin that is under tension. Let's do another vertical mattress suture. So, far. Pull that through. You can use the skin to adjust your needle, something like that. So when you go back through the near near stitch, you're all set up. And again, always using the curve of the needle. So that's another nice vertical mattress suture. Now we want to switch technique a little bit, all right? The difference between an orange and a grapefruit is, well, they're both delicious, but the grapefruit has a thicker rind. And so if we have a thicker rind, we're gonna be able to practice sewing together thicker tissue or perhaps even tissue under tension. We might see that across the joint or the thicker tissue like on the back. So we're gonna do vertical mattress sutures on the grapefruit, and I'll show you why this is a great model for that. Let's make a in there so you can see a nice little gap and again maybe here with thick tissue we want to do another vertical mattress suture I love sewing on citrus because of the smell it's so great so let's take do a vertical mattress suture properly loaded a little further back for a deep vertical mattress suture bite we're gonna pronate our wrist we take that bite about a centimeter from the tissue we're going to drive that through, drive that through, we're going to see that coming up here. It's going to be gentle about hurting the needle. And here we can turn that needle around so we don't have to do it with our fingers. Again with the vertical mattress suture down. I just think this is a good one to practice because we don't do it too often. We can use the needle direction. Now one thing when I'm practicing vertical mattress sutures is I like to have all my knots on the same side Make sure everything's evenly spaced. Now the cantaloupe. What could you possibly use a cantaloupe for? So the cantaloupe is nice if we want to simulate, let's say we are a trauma surgeon and we have a big break in the liver uh, and despite packing it, we're still getting blood welling up. Well, sometimes we want to take a big blunt needle and we want to throw in a big mattress suture, a horizontal mattress suture, which is going to be hemostatic. Well, 
the cantaloupe ends up being a pretty dang good model for practicing that. Okay, check this out. So the cantaloupe, a lot thicker skin, more tough skin. This is one where we might want to practice a big, deep, hemostatic stitch like we might have to do on the liver. Nice cut into this cantaloupe. Let's see, maybe that's our liver bleed in there. So this suture here, this is a CTX needle. This is a long tapered needle. A lot of times we're gonna use that for fascial closure on a PDS. So that's an OPDS suture. That's a monofilament dissolvable suture. And I'll show you this deep horizontal mattress suture. So we want to get a nice even bite. Switch direction, get that angled forward, and then we're going to come the other way. See, I'm always trying to use the curve of the needle, and if you use the curve of the needle, you know where it's going to come up. If we're going to do a surgeon's knot, we would do two throws in that direction. It smells good. We're doing, we're doing a deep hemostatic bite. See, good, two good hemostatic horizontal mattress sutures using a nice big CTX needle. Now the avocado is interesting because it has a very firm outside, very firm exterior, and a very soft fruit underneath. And so this allows us to just practice with needle control, getting in at 90 degrees to that tissue plane, not skiving, uh, and getting the feel of different types of sutures. So that's where the avocado can come in. Let's check that out. So we can make an incision with our avocado. And I'll use a white suture so we can see, but in here, we could just again practice going straight in and doing some interrupted sutures. Simple interrupted sutures. So next we're gonna get delicate. Okay, we have a vine ripened tomato here, very delicate skin, and this is fantastic for doing fine suturing techniques with a small needle and a small suture. So we would see this in the operating room in, for example, repairing a tracheosophageal fistula, or I'll do uh, small bowel anastomoses, uh, also vascular surgery, very um, technical, and so we want to have good needle control and then bring this fragile tissue together without tearing it. So let's try that on the tomato. So with the tomato, we can make a small incision like that, and here we want to use a smaller suture. So this is a C1 needle on a 6-0 proline suture and here we're just going to use similar technique you know if you're not a big fan of tomatoes we can do fragile tissue suturing with grapes. Now they're sort of falling everywhere, but um, I'm gonna take a grape. We're not gonna sew all of them, but I can take a grape and show you how this is another nice model for practicing just fine suturing techniques 
with simple interrupted sutures, a small needle, and a fine suture. Grape is a lot like the tomato when doing fine suturing, and so I think putting two of those on a toothpick gives you some stability. And then again, we could make an incision. Here's our incision in our grape. Take that fine 6-0 proline suture again, and then just give yourself an opportunity here to sew a little bit more delicate tissue. I hope you liked that today at Citizen Surgeon. We went through all of the different fruits and we found out which ones are the best for different techniques. We looked at the banana, simple interrupted sutures, running continuous sutures, those basic skills, banana I think is the best. Then we got into the grapefruit. We found, well, the grapefruit's fantastic when it comes to doing deeper tissues, you know, because we have that thicker rind and so we can practice doing a vertical matches suture if we we're closing up thicker tissues like on the back or if we we're doing a higher tension closure like something across the joint. Then we went into the more fragile tissues so we could uh, practice those uh, vascular anastomoses in the very fine suture and smaller needles. And so we did that with the grapes and the tomato. In the cantaloupe, we found what it was like to put a big needle through a big break, like a break in the liver, and do a nice big horizontal mattress suture that could give us hemostasis in something like a liver injury. And we also did the avocado, which I think is great for just practicing getting that needle feel through different types of tissue. Fruits are amazing uh, to practice suturing on. I think this is much easier than sewing up raw chickens or trying to find raw pig's feet or even spending a lot of money on a suturing board because not only does this give you an opportunity to practice, it also turns into a nice meal afterwards. So if you like this today, give it a like, give it a share, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. I love interacting with you guys. I love answering your questions. So until next time, stay safe study hard, work hard, and I'll see you then.